How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So a few months ago I mentioned three awesome bits of free CAD software that I recommended and one of those was Onshape. So I've been playing around with Onshape for the last few months and I thought it's about time to do a video. And I'm doing this video because I want to show that anyone can do 3D modeling if they just want to try and have a go at it. And I thought the best way to do it is not work through some boring tutorials. Yes, they have great tutorials. If you want to do that, that's fine. I want to show you a problem and how I solved that problem using 3D modeling in Onshape and then 3D printing. So here's the problem. I like to drink energy drinks, specifically Red Bull, and they come in these little tiny cans. And when I'm driving, I put these little tiny cans in my drink holder. And if any of you have done that before, you know what the result is if you take a corner too hard. Flop, it falls on its side and you get sticky Red Bull all over your car drink holder, which has happened to me countless times. So I have had enough of that happening. And what I'm going to design is a can adapter that lets me put these smaller cans into the drink holder in my car and hold them in place. So it's a pretty simple design and a really great way I thought to show you how easy it is to do a simple 3D design in Onshape. So before you even fire up Onshape, what you need to do is get a couple of measurements. So I went to my car with a pair of calipers. These are calipers, by the way and I measured how wide the diameter was in the drink holder. Now, it's quite difficult to get the calipers in to the actual holder, and it's also important to note that the holder is not actually perfectly circular, so this holder I'm designing will be circular, but I'm just going to have to make it fit into the minimum diameter that I can into the car holder, if that makes any sense. It's also worth noting that if you look at the holder in the car, I've got a t really old Toyota Echo, uh, you'll notice that the drink holder actually tapers a bit. This is because during manufacture, they need a bit of taper or draft so the tool can pull away after it forms the plastic molding. So we have to take this into account because the top of the drink holder in the car will be actually larger than the bottom of the drink holder and I couldn't get the calipers into the bottom. So once you log in, you're going to want to create a file. Create, I'm going to call it Red Bull. It's hard to type with all the stuff in front of the keyboard. <laughs> Red Bull drink holder. Okay. So the important thing about getting measurements is you need to write them down. So this is my design. Basically, if you're designing for yourself, it doesn't have to make any sense to anyone except you. So I'm not expecting you to understand what this looks like. It's a side view of the adapter I'm going to make. So I worked out in my car that the diameter at the top is about 80 millimeters across, give or take, and the diameter of the cans, can here, is about 53 diameters, uh, 53 millimeters in diameter. So allowing for some tolerance because we can't get things perfectly exact and we don't want them exact anyway, I'm going to make the hole for the can, uh, what's it, 54 millimeters. And I'm going to make the top of the drink holder 79 millimeters. So there's a little bit of give. I'm being quite generous because I'm not sure how accurate my measurements were. And I'm going to make the whole thing 50 mil deep. And if you see here, by making it 50 mil deep, I'm going to have a 3 mil uh, sort of gap at the bottom. So if the drink does spill, um, I want it to be captured inside the holder itself. And I've also allowed a little bit of a taper on the edges. So if it does spill, it should like channel it into the holder itself, not off to the side into the rest of the car and also I need to take into account that uh, draft that I mentioned before so probably gonna make the bottom of the holder 75 or so it doesn't really matter it's not critical and it might be wrong or right this is uh, all the joy of trial and error and let's see how it goes also as I mentioned before this is a side view and you'll see why I drew it as a side view very shortly so this is on shape and by designing this drink holder, we could do it in several different ways. Onshape is a sketch-based 3D modeling system. You draw something as a sketch, a 2D sketch, and then you do something to it. You either extrude it, or revolve it, or sweep it, or loft it. All these different terms, don't worry about what they mean, you'll learn later. <laughs> um, but they all do different things to that sketch, but you need a sketch to start with. So, looking at this drink holder, it's going to be circular, right? It's going to be... Um, basically a single sketch and what I'm going to do in one hit one uh, feature I'm going to revolve my design so that means I don't have to extrude it cut it taper it I can actually do all of this in one hit and I'll show you how now so what you have on on shape is you have your different views front right and top view so imagine we're looking at the side of our drink holder I'm going to select the right 
and I'm going to select sketch. Cool, so with our right plane selected, we can now start drawing our sketch. So under the sketch tool, we have very different types of sketches we can do. We can do lines, we can do rectangles, circles, hemispheres, polygon, whatever. But we just want line. And what I'm going to do is, much like my drawing, I'm going to just draw the outline. However, take note that because we're revolving, imagine you've got that's the revolve line. We only need to draw half of the sketch because it's going to revolve all the way around. We don't need to draw the whole cut through. This probably doesn't make sense right now. I'll show you as I draw it. So we're just going to simply follow what I've designed. Let's go. So it's going to be here. A little bit of a taper. Down straight. Across to the middle. Down a little bit more. Back out. And then tapered up. And that's basically what I've drawn. Obviously, there's no measurements yet, so it's completely non-accurate, but that's kind of the shape we're after. Cool. So, now we need to start dimensioning it, right? So, let's select dimension, and we'll dimension the height first. So, top there, down here. Uh, yeah, so something I completely forgot about is on shape defaults to inches. American software defaults to inches. I don't want inches, I want millimeters, so just, just cancel that. No, we don't want that. Please go away. We're going to select here, document menu, units, and we want millimeters, and for the hell of it, kilos as well. And degrees is fine. Okay, let's try that again. So, dimension tool here. Select where we want to dimension from, that point to the bottom, and we want to make that 50 millimeters high. Cool. And we just pretty much follow the dimensions that we wrote down before. So it's going to be 79 across, but because we're only dimensioning to the middle point, it's going to be 79 divided by 2. And if you can't be bothered working that out, you can just literally do 79, numlock, 79 divided by 2. And it'll just do it for you. So you can just enter that quite, quite simply. And we wanted to make the bottom bit 3 mil. 3 mil high, cool, and the inner bits, da, da, da. we want to make that one 54, so 54 divided by 2, 27, cool, so what are we missing, we're missing the bottom dimension. That one was going to be 75. 25 divided by 2. Cool, so you can see there's quite a substantial difference and an amount of material between the two walls. And that's why the you know the Red Bull can flips all over the place in the in the car because there's nothing holding it in place. So this adapter should make a big difference. And one of the final few things I need to do is uh, is define this taper here. So I'm thinking I want to make it 3 mil tapered down. Uh, that's good. Now let's escape to get out of the dimension tool. And something you would have picked up is once things are dimensioned in Onshape and again in SolidWorks and pretty much every other parametric CAD it's a bit of software, they'll change color. So they've gone black, meaning they're fully defined, which means you can't move them. Notice these ones are still blue. But we've given them dimensions, you say, Angus. Well, that's because it doesn't know where it is in space. So if I grab the part, you notice I can just pull it up and down like that. And that's because it's not locked to an origin yet. So I can just select this point here, hold shift, select the origin, and then I can make it coincident. Here we go. Why aren't you coincident? Okay, never mind. Let's just drag it to it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it is cloud-based, so I'm used to using SolidWorks and a few of the hotkeys are... I mean, it's very close to SolidWorks, but not the same, obviously. Being cloud-based, there's a few hotkeys that don't work on browsers. But yeah, so completely black means completely defined. And when I studied uh, SolidWorks at university, if you had any undefined features in your sketch when you handed your project in, you would be failed. So it's good practice to get into because undefined features means things can shift without your knowledge and it's very bad.
and it's just poor, poor practice anyway. So there we go. We're happy with that sketch. Let's select OK. And now we want to do a feature to it. So just to show you what different features do, select the sketch and select extrude, for example. Extrude grabs the sketch and gives it thickness, which is not what we want in this case, but oftentimes most designs are lots of lots of extrudes. It's this one of the simplest features you can do. But we don't want that one. We want revolve. Now revolve is very powerful. It's going to turn this simple cutaway view essentially into our final part in one hit. And all we need to do is tell it where to revolve around. We need the revolve axis. And that axis is this one. No, well, first it needs to know what's revolving, so there we go. We need the face and the revolve axis, which is that one. How sick is that? So easy. So it's grabbed that sketch and just revolved it right around. And now we've got a pretty nifty little can adapter. Done and done. So we've pretty much done this whole design with the draft angles and the distances, height, everything with one sketch and one feature. And I sort of take that as a bit of a challenge sometimes. I try to do things with the least number of steps, which is probably not the best thing in some cases, but designs like this, if you think a little bit out of the box, you can do them much quicker. Cool, so pretty much we need to say this is an STL, don't we? So let's just select down here, Part Studio, Export, and we want to export as a STL. I really like the like I really like that on shape lets you export as a SolidWorks file. That's nothing really does that. So, but yeah, for now we want STL because we're 3D printing it, obviously. Binary format, millimeters. Again, you have to make sure you change it to millimeters from inches. I forgot about that. It does it by default. So defaults to inches, change it to millimeters. Unless you're in America and you like to work in inches. I won't judge, but I'm in Australia, so yeah. Millimeters, please. And resolution, you can change the resolution. I always go fine, look, to be honest. You, the file size of a, even a large STL file is usually like 10 meg, which is tiny. And we'll download the part. And just let it do its thing. I have super slow internet, but, ah, but it's done. And we'll just open it up in the up software. Up in the up software. And that's our drink holder for our cans. This episode of Make Your Smooths was in no way brought to you by Red Bull. I just happen to like drinking them because I hate the taste of coffee. So just to clear that one up. And yeah, let's send it to the printer. Also, I think some of you guys might find this pretty cool. Um, my printer is obviously in a different room. And I have a tiny Windows 8 tablet connected to it that cost me like $150 which I remote desktop into to run the printer. So I've got Chrome remote desktop here with the printer. Lovely picture of myself there. And I can fire up the desktop. And then I can go into the up software. And I could even have a webcam connected to it to look at the printer, you know, to make sure there's something in it. But I, I know there is because I already checked it. And with the file, I just drop it into a little USB stick plugged into my router. So it's like a little sort of network storage kind of dealio. So I can access it from that computer network. It's pretty slow. I think this is just because Australian internet's just shocking. But anyway, uh, let's jump in there. And we want the Red Bull drink holder open. And we'll just bring it in. Place. I'll preheat my printer. and send it to print. Pretty simple. And it means I don't have to go do it over there. I can just do it from here. Preferences. I might do it, yeah, maybe 0.25, 10 degree support. And fine. Cool. So that's gonna send and start printing. Let's see how it goes. So here's the finished product. Um, after printing it for about two hours or so on a fine setting, so I didn't want it to um, warp or be two dimensionally inaccurate and I tried fitting it to my car and yeah it works pretty good it's pretty tight so I might have been a little bit generous on the outside measurements but in terms of fitting the can in place it just yeah like that's there's very little movement in there it's gonna sit really well and you know going around corners it's not gonna tip over so yeah it's pretty much a success first round um, 
I'm really happy with how it turned out. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I am not going to put this STL file up for download. The reason I'm not going to is that's not the point of this video. I want you to have a go at Onshape to design your own thing and then print it. And also most cars have different types of drink holders. Some even have little extendy things if you're lucky enough to hold the smaller cans. Mine doesn't. But yeah, the whole point of this video is to show you how easy it is to start using 3D CAD programs like Onshape. So yeah, I highly encourage you to give it a shot. Any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm sure a lot of the other, you other guys can also assist there. And if you did enjoy this video and want to see more 3D printing content, including more Onshape tutorials, please let me know and give me a like. And also please consider subscribing if you haven't already to make this muse. See you later guys. Bye.